I just wanted to do a bit of a behind the scenes on fixing a canoe screen. Uh, canoe is a little open source handheld uh, made in Korea and it's really cool because there's a lot of homebrew software such as visual uh, VJing software and um, also music software like Piggy Track are made for it. So in my case I cracked the screen, don't ask, it was just in a bag with too much and it got crushed. So I got a replacement part um, and I thought oh well let's give it a go. So pulled the back off uh, by taking the four screws out and the back doesn't come off as easily as you'd think. It's like an iPhone or anything else like that. You know, you've got to actually nurse it off. I think guitar picks, if you had, say, four guitar picks or something, that would really work well. Um, I personally used a fine gauge screwdriver uh, just to go under the clips. If you look, there are four clips along the bottom and there are also four clips along the top and there's two along the side as well. So just keep in mind where those clips are because they're really going to help you. Now once you look inside you'll see there's a lot that's soldered together uh, and they don't always uh, unclip. Some of them are soldered directly to the board. So I personally take the battery off before I start just so you can't short anything out. And then to get to the screen you have to take off these four tiny little screws that are actually bolting the board into position um, so that it remains flush to the front of the unit. The board doesn't pop out as easily as you'd think. You kind of have to nurse it a little bit and you know get in there and you'll find eventually it kind of unclicks and then comes out. Now something very important at this point is the orientation of the buttons X, Y, A and B because you can see there that they are um, got these little notches that are pointing in a certain direction. You would think they would just sort of stick in position but as I was to find out they don't and that's a big issue when you put it back together. So. Getting the screen off, I thought it was one of the ones where you actually push forwards um, and it, the clip goes forwards, but it's not. Uh, it's actually this big black bar and you can see all you need to do is actually flip the little switch up on that and then the ribbon cable will pop right out. To put the new one in, you of course just, just slide the ribbon in and flip the bar down so it locks into place. Now to put the unit back together, uh, I stuffed this up. You can see the buttons uh, on the left here are not actually poking through. I just thought, you know, you'd squeeze the thing back together and that they would, um, you know, pop right through. But in actual fact, what happened, and this was after I put the whole lot together, is I realised, oh, hang on, uh, I can't actually get the board to go flush. Why not? And I looked at the other side and realised, ah, oh, fuck, the buttons are not actually popping through. So I had to pull the whole thing apart again. Uh, and make sure, in fact I had to do this from scratch, pull all the buttons out and align them so that they actually all went in with their notches facing the right position. So just be aware that they do shift and move around um, and it probably makes sense to just realign everything and put your little rubber back on top. Putting it back together there is another trap and that is that your volume control might not actually be the V of the, the uh, casing might not be aligned with the potentiometer on the board. Make sure that that is actually uh, hooked into the board. If it's not you'll end up with your volume jammed on maximum or jammed on minimum. So once you've done all of that put your board back on and make sure you get all the screws in. Easier said than done it did take me a fair bit of time. Lots of this kind of footage which I won't bore you with. Uh, and you can see we've got it back together. I like to just do a quick, quick visual inspection to make sure everything's alright. And then of course uh, put the battery back together and uh, just put the lid in. Without clipping it together, power it on just to check that it's uh, coming up with something. Canoe, that looked good to me. So at that point I power it off and click the unit back together. And this was trickier than I thought. Sort of has to reach over the top. Okay. Jesus. So you have to go from there. So after about five minutes of, of trying to get it to clip, I eventually managed to get that happening. And uh, you can see here firing up some software and check the digitizer as well. Uh, personally I use this unit for doing VJ stuff. Uh, it's a whole lot of stop motion animations that I've um, pulled into the unit and you can see here I'm able to um, with a composite cable actually output this to a projector. So this allows me to run visuals at uh, live shows. And yeah, basically this was my unit back together and working. The only problem was I didn't re realize, but on the replacement part, the actual canoe branding that's on the front 
is a little bit that clips on top and um, sticks to this 3M uh, glue here that you can see around the edge. Now, personally, that doesn't bother me too much at this point, but I am gonna keep my old screen and perhaps maybe take the actual screen out of it at a later date and uh, just switch that over so that I keep the uh, canoe brand on the front. But there we go, that's fixing a little canoe uh, with a screen that was broken and is now working again. They can tell us we're crazy, and we can say, well, you haven't seen anything yet.